I'm Deep Mahaman and you're watching The Redman TV. So Liverpool Football Club is open for business and Daniel Sturridge is the first man in through the door. Um, very interesting one, I think we've known this one's been nailed on for a while really haven't we? Um, but great to see that, let's face it, the way that the, the Twitter works and the way that all these ITKs do is so many transfers are fucking nailed on, aren't they? Gaston Ramirez nailed on, complete horseshit, complete and utter horseshit that it was. Um, no, so it's great to see us actually be rumoured to be linked with a player and then absolutely just fucking sign them without any sort of hysteria or, or rigmarole or whatever. You know, transfer window opens, get them signed, get them in. Amazing. Um, now listen, um, I made a point on the match reaction show to our outstanding 3-0 win against Sunderland. If you've not seen that, check it out there. Um, the people's a lot of people's views you read on, on Twitter and sometimes in the YouTube comments and again on, on Talksport and, and what have you, a lot of people quick to jump on this sort of anti storage bandwagon. I don't get it. I can I can attest, right? I sit in, a, in an area of the cop that does have some very miserable fellas around and I've heard them talk some complete and utter horseshit in the last couple of years. Um the, the, the air around Daniel Sturridge's sign is very much a positive one. I've not heard anyone within the city limits describe it as a bad buy. I think a few people are a bit sort of, no, the people aren't getting carried away. People aren't saying, oh, hallelujah. You know, it's not like Daniel Sturridge is going to come in and be the be all and end all answer to every one of the pools attacking and goal scoring problems. No, but it looks to most people like a pretty solid sign. Something that Liverpool have been crying out for in the centre forward positions for years is pace. Daniel Sturridge has got pace. If nothing else, he's a physical presence with pace. <laughs> Look, John Joe Shelby's been playing as in part as part of the front three in a few games this season. Would you rather have him do it or would you rather have Daniel Sturridge do it? That's all I'll say to the people who are negative. What I just don't what I don't want to read any more of, and then I will because people are knobs, is is this jumping on a player's back before he's even kicked the ball in a red shirt. Just fuck off. Just back the fuck off and just wait and see. You know what? If he if he's shit for the rest of the season and he's shit next season, you know what? He'll get sold and it won't matter. But the fact of the matter is the manager clearly wants him. He's pursued him for now two transfer windows and he's got him. He clearly knows the player. He's got, and we looked at this a few weeks ago, he's got sort of roughly a one in three goal scoring record. Now, look, Luis Suarez is clearly our main goal scorer and he's our main goal scoring threat. That's fine. No problem with that. What we don't have is goals around him, or we don't have enough goals around him. The fact that Raheem Sterling scored only a second goal for Liverpool and he's pretty much been first name on the team sheet in the front three for the entire season just screams the fact that we don't have enough goals around Suarez. A one in three player is, is very much what we had in Dirk Kaut, it's what we had in Yossi Benayou, to a certain extent Raul Morelis, again to a lesser extent the likes of, of Riera gone past, Patrick Berger in years and years gone, gone past, Vladimir Smith, these are the kind of players that we need to have and um, there's the potential there at age 23 that he could go on and be a 20 goal season centre forward, plus, fantastic, but until that point if he does what he does, if he does for us what he did at Bolton, that's a very shrewd little purchase and those sort of like, if you can get sort of between 5 to 10 goals, 10 might be pushing it a bit, between now and the end of the season in all competitions, what a buy. And people will be, people, people will be ready to eat some humble pie hopefully by then, but all I'll say is just look, just get off, if you don't, if you don't think it's a great buy, just shut up, shut up and let the man do, let his football do the talking, is all I'll say. Um, anyway, let us know your thoughts, <laughs> I've said shut up, but if you do really, really dislike Sturridge and you want to have a rant about it, comment section, that's where those rants belong. Um, just use this as a little space. Like imagine, go, it's like going into a big open empty room and you're really stressed and screaming. Imagine the comment section like that. Um, so yeah, let us know. Do you think it's a good purchase? Do you think it's one for the future? There's room for it being like a five year contract. Is that true by Liverpool Football Club? 12 million pound, is that a good price? Is it too much? Have we got a steal for a, for, for a player of that sort of age and potential calibre? Is that a good price to pay? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, yes. Um, Thanks very much for watching. Uh, as I've mentioned on the on the post match reaction show, we've got a fantastic subscriber show lined up where we'll be discussing Daniel Sturridge in a lot more detail, looking at some of his stats and and what have you, and, and seeing how perhaps he'll fit into the Liverpool lineup, as well as looking ahead to Mansfield and looking back on a crammed festive period full of highs and lows. Um, free trial for a month, as always, on the RedmenTV.com. So do check it out if you want to take it off. That it's just two pounds, which is about what forty. 7p a week when you divide it by 
12 and 52 blah 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 anyway thanks very much for watching hope to see you there if not we'll see you after uh, after Mansfield on Sunday Ta -da.